I'm Alessandra Barrett, Special Projects Editor for the Journal of Commerce. I'm at our Port Performance North America Conference, and I'm joined by Mike Myron, Deputy Port Director of Operations for Massport, and Michael Vanderbeek, Deputy Port Director of Sales and Marketing for Massport. Thanks for speaking with me today. Obviously, the topic of port productivity is a big one in the industry at large and here at the conference. I read recently that your Conley terminal was up 20% year over year. What are you doing in Boston? Well, that's uh, an achievement that we're most proud of in the past year. 20% improvement in crane productivity is something that our customers uh, have recognized. Um, it was a uh, born out of a situation a couple of years ago where uh, in speaking with our key stakeholders, which included the shipping lines, included our, our labor force, included the trucking community that used the terminal, our federal agency partners, that in order to be successful in the Port of Boston, we needed to increase our production and get in the game. Um, so we took advantage of a labor contract that had expired two years ago. Um, and in conjunction with our partners in the ILA, um, we figured out how to get that done. Uh, we created a system that became a win-win scenario for everybody involved, for the terminal, for labor, for the shipping lines. Uh, it was an incentive program that allowed labor to uh, benefit from working ships faster. Uh, and the net result was, um, was a 20% increase uh, in the past uh, 12 months. And uh, we continue to see the numbers rising uh, every month. So it's a system that we see um, going on into the future. From a growth perspective, uh, Massport's actually had a really good year at Conley Terminal. Um, our volumes are up about 16% year over year versus last year. Um, and it's going to be uh, one, of our, one of our best years ever um, at the Port of Boston. So we're very excited about that. And there are a lot of different factors really contributing to that growth. Um, in the past couple of months, we've actually added a, a couple of new carriers uh, to our services. So we now have uh, Hanj in line uh, calling. We also have uh, Evergreen uh, now calling Boston directly. And starting the first quarter of 2015, uh, Maersk Line is actually going to start calling Boston as part of the 2M. So that's, uh, that's obviously very exciting for us. Um, <clears throat> we also had uh, recently MSC announced uh, a new North Europe service into Boston, which will have Boston featured as the, the first call inbound uh, with a transit time of about seven days uh, into Boston. So that's excellent for us. That's excellent for our shipper community. Uh, so we're very excited about these changes. And that's, that's kind of what's happened this year. Um, but taking kind of a longer term uh, look, we're, we're very excited also about the prospects for future growth uh, for a couple of different reasons. And the first reason is, is infrastructure. Uh, we're investing heavily right now in our infrastructure and uh, the Port of Boston is one of the, a handful of ports uh, that was actually authorized by name in the 2014 WERDA bill for dredging. And without getting into the, the project details there, by mid-2017 or so, uh, which is the current Army Corps of Engineers schedule, uh, we'll have a 47-foot channel, two 50-foot berths, and a 45-foot berth as well, uh, which will allow us to handle ships uh, between 12,000 and 14,000 TEUs, which is the size vessel we expect once the, uh, once the Panama Canal expansion is complete. Uh, so on that side of the infrastructure, we're preparing for the future. Uh, we're also in the process of spending about $75 million on a new uh, dedicated freight corridor. Um, that not only takes uh, trucks off of local streets in Boston, but also uh, improves our connectivity to the, the major highways in the area, including Interstate 93, Interstate 90, and Interstate 95. Uh, so those infrastructure improvements are, are moving us in the right direction to accommodate future growth. And then uh, another compelling uh, aspect that we think is going to allow us to grow in the future um, is that our, our uh, shipper community uh, in New England is very active and also very vocal that they're interested in more direct services in Boston uh, because Boston is, is the port that best serves the New England uh, community. And so we're, we're seeing them be very active on our behalf, which is great to, to have customers uh, on your side uh, advocating for additional uh, direct services into Boston. We've seen ports on both coasts struggling with congestion issues, which spills over into congestion at terminals across the U.S. and in Canada. How's Boston faring in that regard? Well, fortunately, we're faring very well. Uh, unlike some of our colleagues on the east and west coast that are facing congestion problems. Uh, we were congested, however, seven or eight years ago, and so we took the opportunity then to put a very disciplined uh, approach to master planning, and over the past seven years we've executed on that. So we converted to an all-grounded, high-density stacking environment, and that's paid off. Uh, we've dealt with our dwell times, and that's also paid off. About uh, seven years ago, we also dealt with that chassis uh, um, situation because we were starting to feel the pressures. We moved to a neutral pool. We moved it off-site. 
Um, and, and over the seven years, we figured out how to work that system. And so today, we don't deal with the chassis problems. Um, about 40% of the chassis are being sourced from that pool, and about 60% of those chassis are being sourced by truckers and other pools in the area. And that has worked out very well for us. If I can just add to that too, an another I think uh, aspect of, of not so much the, the congestion issue, but uh, kind of the efficiencies that we have in, in the Port of Boston that uh, I think helps us out a lot with the, the operations there, is the fact that we have a single uh, a single hundred acre terminal in the Port of Boston that's operated by a single entity, which is Massport, and uses a, a single terminal operating system. And so, you know, you've, we've got some of the largest uh, ocean carriers in the world calling Boston on a weekly basis, and those include MSC, the CKYHE carriers, and, and now Maersk Line is part of 2M. And the fact that all of that cargo goes into the same terminal uh, is a huge benefit uh, for us because we don't have to worry about, you know, on Mike's side as a, as a terminal operator, doesn't have to worry about repositioning containers between one terminal and another, doesn't have to worry about managing multiple gates. Uh, we are a concentrated operation, so that's actually, um, that's actually worked out, uh, I think, uh, to our benefit as well. Great. Thanks for taking time from the conference to speak with me today. I've been speaking with Mike Myron, Deputy Port Director of Operations for Massport, and Michael Vanderbeek, Massport's Deputy Port Director of Sales and Marketing.